I'm here with Dave Waghorn, who is the MD of Herco. We're standing in A&M EDM's facility in West Brom in Birmingham. Dave, I think, forgive me if I'm wrong, but they have more of your machines here than you have in your showroom. Yes, that's definitely true. I think they've got about 20 now here. Um, they've got right from the early days right up to the most recent machines. So your relationship, and this video is really about your relationship and why you believe uh, that this company keep coming back to you time and time again, started in the early 2000s. Is that right? Yes, I think Mark Winfield, the owner of A&M EDM, bought his first Herco machine, I think around 2003, uh, a VM3. So what is it that they're making and producing that fits and sits so well with your technology? We've always specialised in the small volume, one-offs, um, prototyping type businesses. Um, and with that, the control lends itself to the first off part being programmed as quickly and easily as possible. That's always been the philosophy at A&M EDM. In fact, I think from the early days, they would have the door open and people would bring difficult jobs in through the door. And I say Mark and the engineers he's taken on, he's got some very talented engineers here. He definitely um, they does. Can, they can do the hard work here, no question. And so what variety of machines have they gone for? Because I know it's three axes, they started there, but now they're kind of progressing and going into the five axis world. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say we've developed together. Um, certainly most of their machines in the early days were three axis. Um, Herco went into the five axis market probably from the middle 2000s. And I think they started here with a 10U, then moved on to a 30U, they've since added an SR. Um, and then from the size of machines, we've got our smallest say. machine, the VM10 here. And then, and then A&M go up to our largest machine where they've got two DCX 32s behind you. I know, I've interviewed Mark before. We've been here a few times because they're making an incredible part. I'll mention it in just a few moments time. But um, he loves the control panels. He loves the way, the programming and everything behind these machines. Yeah, I, I mean, I mustn't forget about the machines. The machines cut well if you speak to people like Gary who's working on the engine project he's someone who you know really appreciates the consistent accuracy um, that you can get off the machines but the control is always been what sold what sold what we do and the idea is you can take um, whether it's a sketch whether it's an idea in your head whether it's a DXF file or a, a complicated NC program you can get it quickly and easily onto the machine in your first off finished part done. I know that when we were, um, and when I interviewed Mark, he was talking about being able to be working on the machine, but also doing other stuff in the background. And it just, it's simultaneous. It just works, that it works for him and his company with the one-off work. Exactly right. I mean, Mark knows how everything here works, but obviously has to rely on his guys to do it. And they can, yeah, he he's works very well with cells where one guy will run four machines. Um, they use the concurrent programming. So once the job's up and running, they can then program the next job on the machine. Making um, it more efficient, the machine it, shop, really. Yeah, it's, it's very efficient, yeah, and, and, and they do, I mean, what you'll see here, they do some really nice work, really high quality work. So before we talk just briefly about the engine block, what's the secret? What's the secret to a company buying over 20 machines from a company and still not having a bad word to say about them? Okay, well, I, 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 I would say there's, there's a good relationship here. Um, it, it can't be done on one side or the other. It's no good claiming the machines do all the work for them. Definitely a and have a, a very talented group of people here and a very, very strong leader in, in Mark. Um, we like to think that we've tried to help them on the way. We try to advise them when we can. And if they've had problems, which clearly they have over the people years, do. doing all sorts, um, we've been able to help them in the right way and get them back up and running in, in the best possible way or, or help you know, work together to solve any challenges. And just to finalise, uh, Gary here, an engineer who I keep calling a genius, is working on uh, developing the mini, the classic mini engine. He's making almost every part on your machines. Why is that? Um, I've got to say a lot of it is down to Gary's talent, actually. I can't, I can't deny that. Um, he's, he's set it up specifically the engine block. He's managed to work out 
how to machine it on the 42U. And I think he does that whole operate, whole the whole block in three operations, which is incredible. Um, but he's doing all the other smaller parts as well on different machines scattered around around the building. So there is some um, motor racing. There's quite a lot of five-axis parts. There's turn parts. But there's tight there's tolerances on this, you know, on all of this work, and every machine is just hitting everything he needs. Yes, the accuracies. The accuracies on our machines are good and consistent. And always say the quality of surface finish, the the parts off and, and the first off part as well, not after you know four or five trials, whatever. They're good and the, and the parts look good and they come off without needing any extra work. And um, yeah, it's something to be proud of. And it, I say it's very much the relationship, but um, the machines only do part of the job. Gary does a fantastic job. On of that, course, so. of course. So just to finalise then. What do you think is going to happen for the future with yourselves and A&M EDM? Um, obviously, you'll have to ask them, but um, <laughs> the relationship's there. I think we work together well. I think we know our, both our strengths and weaknesses. And the reason for buying a Herco 20 years ago is still true today. I, I would probably argue the machines are a little bit better, the software's developed, and there's certainly no reason um, you know, not to go anywhere else. But, but the relationship is strong. We know the guys very well. We've let them beat us at golf several times. You'd think that would help as well. So um, hopefully we can carry on and move, to, move on together. I think Mark might have a comeback yeah. to that. There you go. There you have it. Over 20 Herco machines. What an incredible achievement.